Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at the Insta360 Go. Insta360 has taken notice of the FPV community and added a 5 minute FPV mode. But keep it moving, because it does get hot. It comes with this little case where you line up the contact points and it begins charging. This is your button to check your LED. You can connect it to your Android phone, your PC, or what have you to get the data off the camera. Or you remove this little pad and you can plug it into your iPhone or other iDevice. If you buy it in a bundle, you get this case with various other connecting points, like if you wanted to wear it around or something like that, but that's not what we're interested in. We want to fly it on micros like these, because it only weighs a little over 18 grams. To me, it seems the most compelling reason you'd want this camera is because it can stabilize your footage and it has a nice HD view. This is the HB FPV DX40. It's a little micro sin whoop. To mount the Insta360 Go, I just used a rubber band and a little bit of Umagrip. I thread the rubber band right through that gap for secure mounting. This footage is paused right now, but I just wanted to make it clear, Insta360 Go on the right hand side has what's called Color Plus. So that's their daytime mode. That's uh, through the free application that you get. So I haven't color graded this with any other sort of video editor. And then on the left, we have the turtle that comes stock inside the DX40. And I think what this is going to give you, it's gonna show you that stabilization. I picked this flight because it was early on before I had done much of my tuning on the DX40 and we also have a fair bit of wind that kind of jostles it around a little bit. So that gives you a little bit of information about the DX40 as well as the Insta360 Go. Now as an FPV pilot when you yaw around it looks a little bit wonky because we know we tend to add some roll as we yaw so there should be some tilting but the camera does a real nice job of just kind of holding the horizon steady and then you just fly around. Also, I did find that if you have a Windows-based computer, you can use the built-in video editor, I believe it's called Windows Movie Maker, in order to rotate if you need to rotate or make any sort of clips or edits that you might want to do. It works just fine after you process it out of the Insta360 Go app. If you're interested in the DX40, I'll put a link to the product down in the video description. I have another quad that's a custom build that we'll be flying a little bit later. Obviously, this is a very overcast day, and you might be wondering why I didn't use the, the night version of their color correction on the Insta360 Go app, and I just didn't think it looked as good, so I thought this was... Pretty dang good. As we pass by the house here and we get close to the truck, I'm going to be quiet so you can listen to the audio. As you can tell, the audio is a lot better than we've experienced on all-in-one HD FPV cams. Uh, hopefully it was clear to you which one was audio because I tried to put audio over the side that we were playing at that time. I also lowered the volume quite a bit in order to make it tolerable. Uh, even on the Insta360 Go, it can sound a little bit annoying. With these micro motors, they kind of sound um, a little bit like a drill for doing a root canal if they use drills and root canals. I presume they do. I've never had one. But at any rate, this is some side-by-side -side footage. You can see how it stabilizes, smooths, thing, smooths things out. You also have the ability here to color grade in various sort of color situations. Uh, we're going to look at some more flight footage here. Now, the one we're going to look at next is a little bit hard to watch, in my opinion. But I thought it could be useful for some of you when trying to do a comparison from this camera. Okay, I've paused it here again at the very beginning just to make sure this is abundantly clear. We've got the Flow State and Color Plus in the top middle. We've got Flow State, no Color Plus, bottom left. No flow state, so it's not going to stabilize the footage, and no color plus in the bottom right. And it's a little bit interesting because I do some punch outs and some rolls. And so when you see that, you're going to maybe want to go back and watch that again because when you have the flow state on and you do those things, it looks, especially knowing how it should look as an FPV pilot, it'll look a little bit strange. When you set the camera down, it also kind of does this almost like a wobble like it's almost searching for horizon for some reason i've noticed that several times but when you take off it seems to be doing just fine maybe there's something that i should have done pre-takeoff or when i turn the camera on in order to straighten that out but i thought the footage looked good as far as the stabilization goes and as well as it being able to keep the horizon as i flew it around I don't want to watch too much of this, but I do want to get to the point where you see the flip. I've only got about two minutes of this footage I've got to, I've, that I've got queued up. But the flip, or the roll, I guess it is. Sorry, I misstated that. The roll that I do, 
it, it just it's comical to me with the flow state so if you're planning to do acrobatic or aerobatic moves you probably don't want to have flow state on so you're probably not flying a sin whoop at that time and i should mention that newbie drone kind of started the whole hype train on this they had a really cool video they put it on one of their newbie drone whoops i'm not for certain for certain which one but they had a posting on facebook where they flew it around and i think they used video editing to do the rolls because the rolls are real smooth and real centered and, and they were flying something around that was real nice and smooth i think they were in a indoor paintball area and maybe a couple other scenes they mixed in as they were going through their footage it was a short clip but it was very impressive and i think it's one of those things that caught a lot of people's eye and then it started people buying this this camera is not cheap I think it comes in around 200 bucks. Every once in a while, you can find it on sale for 180 or 179 something like that. And if you buy it from Insta360 Go, uh, they do ship DHL, or at least they did in my case. Of course, shipping right now has kind of gotten all messed up. I suspect you could probably find this from places like B&H Photo. Uh, you might be able to even find it from places like Walmart Online. I know Amazon carries them as well, and I do want to talk a little bit about Amazon as we get into this. But we got to see that roll that I thought was all wonky. Let's move on to just kind of looking at the footage itself all full screen. This is without flow state, so it's not catching the horizon. It's not trying to stabilize their footage in any way. And it is kind of, I think, a tough lighting environment in that you have the sun relatively low so it kind of peers through all the trees in the neighborhood so i'm kind of flying in and out of the sun and i thought that might also be useful especially if you're flying it in an area with a lot of trees on how the footage might look as you come in and out of these different lighting situations uh, i'll play a little bit of audio here i'll put audio on the screen in case you don't want to listen to the audio if you're sensitive to that sort of thing uh, i think it sounds a little bit different and it sounds in my opinion a lot better than what we've had on other micro cameras including the hd fpv cameras that we've had in the past past. Once again, I mounted this with just a simple rubber band and a little bit of the ultralight or the ultra slim Uma grip. And the color plus on this really helps to brighten up, especially when I do that punch out over the house. And I'll show that to you next to how the color plus uh, straightens out that footage to where you can see it does a better job of highlighting where you're headed rather than if you don't use the color plus on how it's just kind of all dark down there so the color plus does a fair job of color correcting or increasing the light whatever it's doing to make in my opinion again uh, a better viewing image so i've paused it here we've just crest over the house and we can kind of see straight down on the chimney see how dark it is down there in the shadows and now I show you this image with the Color Plus on, which you can see the shrubbery that's down below the sun line, I guess you would call it, down into the yard a little bit. I thought it did a pretty good job, and you don't have to know how to color grade in order to do that. And for me and probably others like me who don't spend a lot of time color grading, that might be something that interests you, and I wanted to highlight that. I've gone back to the DX40 footage here a little bit. We got the side-by-side -side on here again, and we're going to switch out of this. I just wanted to remind you about the stable it's really pretty impressive at least to me but as we finish up the flight here we're going to go into the standalone turtle view so this is stock on the camera to give you a full screen image uh, maybe I should have done this when it was fresher in your mind but I wanted to give a quick overview uh, people tend to in the masses of all the views of videos tend to only watch about five to sometimes six minutes so i wanted to squeeze as much comparison stuff as i could at the beginning of the video so those people who may not have the time to watch the whole thing or the interest can get this information about this camera so if they've seen other videos maybe they can compare it to the information they've seen there or if they're kind of on the verge of whether or not they want to ordering maybe there's some information in there that can tip them one way or another so i didn't mention it but i think i said i would this is the iflight x f3 it's a three incher it does have holes in it where we can run bigger motors at the time i built this we didn't have too many 120 something motors on the market and i think it would be best suited for a 120 something motor on the market but these 1108s while they're batter hungry they do fly it pretty well uh, and this is kind of a typical alien i think looking quad but anyways i've got a video on it but i wanted to show you how i just take the rubber band and i put it right between there and i lean this against my battery that's strapped in here and then i have access to the button that sticks out the side oh i had a little dirt stuck in there i still have access to that button because it's sticking out the side i don't line up the camera in the center 
I line the camera overall on the center when I mount these things, and then I just try to match the FPV camera or maybe a touch higher than the FPV camera in the footage that I've shown you. So again, this little guy comes in, $179 is the best price I've seen, and that's not consistent. You'll find that from time to time. I'll put links down in the video description if you're interested in looking at it. Maybe they've got a special deal going on for a holiday when you're watching this video, or they're just trying to move more cameras. I'll try to find as many vendors as I can so that you can order with comfort but the last thing i wanted to talk about was you know with gopros they have this replacement program and i'm curious has anyone used the amazon camera protection accident protection protection plan so when you go to the website to order it you can see the price there's at 195 dollars and 99 cents and it says only 13 left in stock order soon uh, but this program costs 21 dollars. it seems to indicate it covers most of the stuff we'd want to cover but i don't have any experience using any sort of amazon protection plan if it's got a hassle to it or if it's got something else that's kind of a, a gotcha i'm curious if any of you have used it and if this this camera interests you and you have used it or people can leave some information in the comment section below about it maybe it's something that might be of interest because you know the camera is not going to live forever not the way we fly fpv we crash i didn't have any ejections in my crashes but you know all crashes vary you know if you smack something i can't imagine this lens would survive if you smack something dead on but i'm curious about this camera protection plan that they offer on amazon is it any good is it something that we should pursue or not if you have any other comments questions suggestions or otherwise please let me know in that section down below i appreciate your time and thanks for watching